Next up is Nuspers, which is a multinational media giant with stakes in internet businesses in emerging markets, pay TV and print media. The group's most significant assets are 35% of Chinese internet company Tencent and wholly owned multi-choice in Africa. The company has a market cap of 9.5 billion rand, a PE of 93 and a dividend yield of 0.24%. So in fact, we had NASPA's uh, results coming out at about yes. half past six on Friday evening. I don't know if you were sitting delving through those numbers at that time of the day. No, I did it over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those look pretty solid. Yeah. Lots of reinvestment in the business, lots of reinvestment in e-commerce. Um, I guess DSTV, DSTV subscribers pulling back a little bit, which was a slight concern, yeah. but still all eyes are 10 cent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, there's a really nice cash flow angle when it comes to the multi-choice business. But what basically happened with, with multi-choice and what they now call the video entertainment segment is that because it is focused on sub-Saharan Africa, they're earning revenues in rands and nairas and, and shillings. Mm. Um, but but they have to buy content from the US and from the UK and that is in hard currency terms and with the depreciation of all these African currencies you've actually seen um, a, a kind of a margin impact there mm. um, to counter that margin impact they raised um, they raised their their subscription fees everyone knows they raised they raised their subscription fees it was Lots of people burning. Yeah. And a lot of people I personally know um, actually decided to, to maybe go another route and, and, and get rid of that, that DSTV premium subscription. So um, unfortunate, but it is also, it is a signal of, of the times. It's just, it's, it just, it's, uh, it, it, it's just unfortunate. So with Nuspers, because it's such a diverse business, I want to focus on the gaming element because yeah. out of the ones we're going to talk about, it's got the biggest sort of exposure to, to gaming, which is also social media because they, these are social games. You know, you yes. play them online, people are chatting the whole time while they're killing each other. I haven't really been involved and, and gotten locked into any of these games. But Tencent just bought Clash of Clans yeah. for $8 billion, which um, is apparently absolutely massive yeah i mean i've in my own home um i'm i'm competing with clash of clans on a daily basis <laughs> for attention from my husband he loves that game he does not leave it alone and That's then you I'm also have to start it, no know. it's absolute madness it's worse than candy crush apparently yeah. um and you don't only have clash of clans you also have boom beach which yeah. is from the same company um it's a finnish company called supercell yes. um they bought it at quite an expensive rating um i think king king's um, the, what King Games, the yes. guys who have... Yeah. Um, they got Candy Crush. Yeah, they've got Candy Crush. They were bought over by Activision Blizzard a couple of years ago. And the price that Tencent now paid for um, Supercell was 10 times that amount. Mm. But they reckon the addictive nature of these games are probably going to, to make it a worthwhile acquisition. And it's getting to the point where it's almost like sport. I mean, people yeah. watch other people play um, for entertainment. Yes. Uh, and then obviously to be able to get more lives and crack codes and everything, people pay real money for fake money in this virtual world. Absolutely. And the thing about Clash of Clans and Boom Beach and, and those games that make it so, so much fun is it's not like Candy Crush where it's just you um, mm. trying to get to a certain level. You're actually engaging with other people um, across the world, playing in teams. It's, it's, very, very, <laughs> um, it's very clever, yeah. to be honest. It's a great business model. Yeah. And I guess the point here that I'm trying to make is that Tencent are hedging themselves against, I think, League of Legends, which is their sort of winner yeah. um, by buying one of the big competitors. So they're sort of putting their hand up as a consolidator in that extremely profitable, mm. exciting world of, of online gaming. Um, so as a Tencent shareholder or Nuspa shareholder, you should be happy that they're, um, you know, growing in that space. Yes, and of course there are cross-sell opportunities as well. We know that Tencent's gaming business is well integrated with its um, with WeChat. WeChat platform. Um, and WeChat already has a, almost 700 million users. If they can get a kind of a worldwide base through, um, through the Supercell games, mm. um, it, all the more better for, for Tencent in general. So through that WeChat platform, which as you say, 700 billion subscribers, Mm. You can push the gaming, you can push taxi hailing, you can mm. push e-commerce. You know, there's a huge amount of synergies between all their businesses. Yes. Hot or not? So, we're talking about Nasbash. It's underpinned by a, by a very a very solid revenue growth in, in the likes of a Tencent. Um, and we always say the same thing about Nasbash. Um, Nasbash's market value is less than its stake 
that then at stake in Tencent is worth, which, is which means you're getting everything else for free. Yeah. Um, you're getting a growing e-commerce business. You're getting the solid cash generation of the likes of a multi-choice and a whole lot of other stuff. Um, it has to be hot. And if you have a look at their latest results, that e-commerce business is finally starting to become profitable. Absolutely. So when that starts pushing through in the numbers, that 90 multiple is going to look ridiculous. So I agree with you 100%. Yes. Both hot on NASPERS.